Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Good morning everybody, today we will start with two problems. Uh, first we will work out a uh, really simple problem. Let us say P prime is uh, A cos omega t times sin kx, can we decompose into left and right running waves, Just can we work out this exercise. It is very simple you should be able to do it in about half a minute or something. So there are two ways you can do this problem, one is just to uh, recognize that uh, you can write cos omega t sin kx as uh, sin kx plus omega t plus sin kx minus omega t over 2. So, this is a identity. So, we can clearly see that uh, when you talk about a cos omega t sin kx, this would be a over 2 sin kx plus omega t plus sin kx minus omega t. So, this here is the f of x minus c t and this here is g of x plus c t. So, it is kind of a trivial problem, but not always it may be so trivial. <coughs> I mean this is a case where you can very obviously visually see the identity. <coughs> But if it is not so easy, what we can do is uh, uh, we can say uh, we know that our f plus g equal to p and f minus g equal to u. So, therefore, we can get f equal to well I made a slight mistake uh, over rho c. So, let me uh, move this O C here. This is okay, right. So, <coughs> f equal to p plus put the primes rho bar c u prime over 2 and g equal to half into p prime minus rho bar c u prime. I uh, please verify if this formula is right. So, uh, how to do this problem? We are given only p prime, we do not know u prime. So, how do you get u prime? Momentum equation. So, let us write the linearized momentum equation do u prime by do t equal to minus uh, do p prime by do x. So, what would be u? Uh, dou p by dou x would be there will be a k coming out which is omega over c uh, and I will get a cos omega t sin k x when I differentiate becomes cos k x and uh, now <coughs> if I have to integrate it. I get u prime equal to minus 1 over rho c a and there is omega here and if I integrate this term this omega will go I will get sin omega t cos k x I hope this is right. So, I can uh, say <coughs> f equal to uh, this formula of here half times p prime plus rho bar c u prime. So, f would be equal to half times p prime was uh, so let us take this a out cos omega t sin k x uh, minus rho c when I multiply this term rho c to u prime this will go away. So, I will get sin omega t cos k x 
which is equal to a sin k s minus omega t and g would be equal to a over 2 times p prime is the same term cos omega t sin k x. Now, there is a minus sign over here. So, the minus and this minus becomes plus sin omega t cos k x equal to a over a over 2 sin k x plus omega t. So, this is like a brute force way of doing it whatever function you are given you can decompose into a left turning wave and right turning wave as it is. But sometimes as I mentioned we can just without doing any uh, anything complicated we can straight away write the answer as follows is it clear any questions on this I will pause for a minute for you to digest this. <coughs> And those of you who have finished this uh, question can think about the next question. Okay, so the uh, next question is: We linearized our momentum equation, which is of this form: du over dt equal to minus one over rho bar dp over dx plus nu times d squared u over dx squared and this is the viscous term and nu is the kinematic viscosity which is written as c lambda over 2 which lambda is the mean free path. Uh, so, going back to this question uh, when is it okay to neglect viscous diffusion or viscous uh, viscosity we usually just say it is negligible or we will deal with Euler equation I that is what I started with and because I did not want to discuss this, but now I want to discuss this. Do you have an answer or can you work? Huh? Hi Reynolds. Hi Reynolds. No. Yes, in some sense, but uh, that is. There is no boundary. The hint is there. We high temperature dependency we have a dependency on the mean free path high temperature when the mean free path is high high and low are uh, when i say that you are a tall person uh, maybe you are tall compared to kids in one one school but when i compare to you with dutchman you are short so it depends on what i compare tall or short with So how do you how how do you, how how is it? And that's a number is what? So we have to compare mean free path with something. And what is that something? That that's the length scale of what? Huh? Molecular collision. Yeah. So uh, and that is how the transport takes place. Whatever uh, with the diffusion. And uh, uh, what is the appropriate length scales in acoustics? Wavelength. So I think we have to uh, compare the mean free path with wavelength and see uh, when they are of the same order. What happens when one is higher than the other? What happens? So how do we do this usually? Uh, I think you remember doing boundary layer theory. Do you remember? Like you non-dimensionalize the momentum equation and then you recovered Reynolds number out of it and so on. So, something similar we have to do here. So, we will do a dimensional analysis. So, what we do is we can uh, 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 we can try to uh, uh, scale this with appropriate parameters. So, what we can do is uh, I will uh, scale velocity for fluctuation with some kind of reference velocity <coughs> and pressure with some kind of reference pressure. So, I will have a reference pressure P naught and uh, this fluctuating pressure some value and uh, <coughs> reference velocity of the order of can be p naught by 
rho bar c, that is the order of magnitude, it would not be exactly given a pressure velocity is of the order of p over rho c. <coughs> so, if I non dimensionalize this I can get and I have a time scale tau. So, all I am doing is dividing and multiplying by the same number. So, my equation is not changed. Um, so, here for example, I divided by p naught over rho c and I multiplied by p naught over rho c. So, in, in the effect I am simply multiplying by 1. Now, <coughs> if you choose the appropriate length scales and make these terms here of the order 1 and uh, then we can uh, 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 so, I will call the uh, non dimensional terms as uh, for example, non dimensional velocity as u tilde, non dimensional pressure as p tilde and so on. So, I will say p naught over rho bar c tau do u tilde over do t equal to minus on p naught over rho bar do p tilde over do x times 1 over lambda plus nu dou squared u tilde over dou x squared 1 over lambda squared. Now, assuming that I can <coughs> use the appropriate scales and make all these derivatives of the order 1, <coughs> then we should be able to compare these terms and find out when um, this term is dominant or when this term is dominant. So, the first term is of the order of <coughs> let us cross of uh, p naught over rho c uh, that is coming everywhere. So, I will cross of p naught over rho c is still there. <coughs> so, the c still stays here. So, I will have the first term of the order of 1 over uh, c tau, the second term is right now of the order of 1 over lambda, third term is uh, and I have a nu which is of the order of c lambda, nu is c lambda. And there was a c here. So, let me, so these are the order of three terms. So, let me try to multiply all three terms by the same number. So, I will make this first one 1. So, this will be c tau over lambda and if I multiply this by c tau, I will get cancel. So, c omega over lambda squared f which I can recast as so, th this is c tau over lambda and <coughs> if I replace tau by a time period, so I can say c over lambda f right and here I will say c and uh, c is equal to lambda f. So, this term is also of the order 1 and this is, so you have 1, 1 and lambda. So, this uh, term over here nu times dou squared u prime by dou x squared will be important if <coughs> lambda over, uh, I mean this capital lambda over small lambda is 
large and if it is the other way it will be negligible. If the mean free path is much smaller than the wavelength which is normally the case the mean free path in the atmospheric conditions is the order of 10 power minus 6 meters or something and for typical waves which we deal with wavelength is of the order of meters 1 meter 2 meter half meter. So 10 power minus 6 over a meter is 10 power minus 6 whereas the other two terms we saw are of, are of the order 1. So therefore <coughs> we can say that this viscous term is several orders of magnitude lower than uh, the uh, uh, other term that is the unsteady term and the uh, pressure flux. Now <coughs> the viscous term would be quite important when you are having low lambda or high frequency and that happens in the case of ultrasonic. So when you have very high frequencies uh, and you have very small wavelengths then <coughs> this term will be very important. Okay. So the question was asked uh, yesterday. <coughs> that uh, you can have A as P max plus P min over 2 and B as P max minus P min over 2 or we can have the other solution A as P max minus P min over 2 and B as P max plus P min over 2 and which is the right one to do I think you asked this question. Uh, Shabrish, yeah. <coughs> so I think this is a very profound question actually and uh, actually uh, worked quite hard on this when I was a master student because I was measuring admittance I could not recall what was the thing uh, right away <coughs> and this is very interesting. In fact uh, uh, actually there is no way you can distinguish between uh, A and B there it, by looking at the standing wave structure from the pressure amplitude versus uh, the space the amplitude disturb, uh, uh, plot. Uh, and this was this is no problem for someone who is measuring the admittance of clothes or carpet or these holes in the walls or whatever or any uh, damping because there you know that we have a damping material. So if the incident wave is a left running wave and the reflected wave is a right running wave we will say that the left running wave has more amplitude than the right running wave and you can fix the <coughs> uh, uh, fix the NB appropriately right to make sure that the incident wave has more amplitude than the reflected wave. So that is trivially obvious but what I was doing during my masters was measuring admittance of flames and I found out <coughs> when I did the experiment that I could not make out between these two then uh, I mean I actually spent quite some time thinking about it yesterday I just could not recall this actually. Uh, it, it turns out that there is still a way to find out actually which is more. And perhaps somebody else has the answer I will just wait and ask someone else if they know how you can make out. And I will give you a hint actually this is how I got the answer uh, I think that was in 1989 when I was working on this <coughs> oh that is quite long time back. So uh, if you have a left running wave and right running wave those would be extreme cases. For example, if I have an impedance tube uh, the way I drew it and you have a left running wave coming in and everything got absorbed so there is no right running wave. Now you can consider the other, other situation where no, le uh, no left running wave is coming and a lot of right running waves are coming almost nothing is coming to the left but everything is coming from left to right. So that is like a right, right running wave. What would distinguish these two waves? That was the first thing we started the class with. The left running wave is of the form, yeah, omega t plus kx, and the other one is of the form. Okay, so one is plus kx, the phase is going plus kx, the other one is going phase goes minus kx. So it will be the same thing, but one will have a slope this way, one will have a slope other way. <coughs> and otherwise, if you look at the amplitude of this traveling wave, it will be flat because it is always a or always b, so it will be flat. <coughs> So we have to look at the <coughs> phase distribution that is the way you can distinguish between left running wave and right running wave. So the same thing we can do and we can <coughs> look at the phase distribution for a given admittance. So we say uh, you, you take a, a value um, 0.1 plus some 0.1 i or something and then you take the minus of that and then you look at the amplitude plots they will look exactly identical but the phase will actually look uh, different and from that 
uh, one would be falling, one would be rising. From that, actually, we can make out which is uh, 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 dominated by left turning wave and which is dominated by the right turning wave, or alternately, which is the direction of energy propagation. Uh, so, if you are a mechanical engineer studying um, admittance of carpet or clothes and so on, uh, we can know, take the answer for guaranteed, we do not have to measure the phase at all. You can simply use volt meters and measure the amplitudes and use p equal to uh, I mean a and b as p plus p max plus p min over 2 and p max minus p min over 2, but if you are a combustion person trying to measure admittance of flames, we have to look after phase. So, I hope you did the homework problem yesterday uh, and is that working out, I will write down the answer <coughs> and from there we will conclude the answer to uh, this question, but that does this is indeed a quite a important question. That is I mean the question is how to distinguish between a impedance condition or admittance condition which is sending energy into the pipe or out of the pipe that that is what it boils down to it is more deeper than which is A which is B in some sense. Yes, what is the question? Actually, you had a question. Something is bothering you, please. Understand something. What is it? I don't know one that symbol. Which symbol? Uh you you tell the this one? Here. On the left hand side. Here. Rho bar C, oh. rho bar C tau, tau is the time scale T over tau and tau and period is a obvious time scale to choose for this. Of course, when you have flow and acoustics together then you have you have one time scale corresponding to flow one corresponding to acoustics, but here it is simple form. Okay. okay, so I will not write two fees because we saw that phi 1 minus phi 2 it always appears together. So, because I can always choose my clock to start my t equal to 0 such that only one stays that is my right to fix the reference time. So, if I rewrite this So, we can write this complex amplitude as some real amplitude times e power i theta which is the complex amplitude times e power i omega d and we have to note that this phase is actually a function of x. There are cases when it may not be, but in general it is a function of x and that is determined from here. So, theta of x equal to tan inverse this over this. this we can uh, recast perhaps as So, uh, this is just straightforward algebra. Now, okay, I will pause.
hope there is no algebraic mistake if there is something please point out because the result will dramatically alter if there is a minus sign. Actually the books do not speak anything about phase because none of the acoustations are ever concerned about uh, measuring a substance which is driving because all things they encounter with the damp in general everything damps, <coughs> but only in um, combustion or aerospace we are having flames which actually um, impart energy into the wave and then your reflected wave is more than uh, incident wave. So really I had to work this all out by myself and I will go by the exact thinking process. Uh, so we look at the travelling waves so we will have a limit of r equal to 0 or so nothing was reflected everything kept propagating as a left running wave So what will be theta, theta of x will be tan inverse tan of kx, this would be kx and this is pretty obvious that this is a left turning wave, we are recovering a, a nice result because uh, this is, so you have e power i kx e power i omega t which is e power i times k x plus omega t. So this is of the form uh, f of uh, uh, x plus c t or something like that. So this is indeed a left turning wave and uh, how do you recover right turning wave? So here uh, we put a equal to 0 then you will get a right running wave, so you will get uh, uh, theta equal to, so we, we say a equal to 0, so you will get uh, theta equal to tan inverse tan of minus kx. this is nothing but So if you have uh, the phi can be absorbed with uh, the constant, so e power minus i k x, e power uh, i omega t and this constant contains the e power phi, this can be written as a e power minus uh, i into omega t minus k x, this is of the form f of x minus c t which is a right turning, right turning wave. So uh, we, I mean these are trivially obvious but we are recovering from our general result. So, uh, so a left running wave would have a phase that goes this way uh, and for a right running wave, so you will get some such curve. Now if you uh, take a look at the uh, for a general termination, but we will consider two cases when something is driving and something is damping. So I will make some plots of this uh, uh, standing wave distribution both the amplitude and phase. <coughs> uh, 
So what I would uh, very strongly suggest is you can write your own computer program you can pick A, B and phi and then play with how the amplitude looks like phase looks like and then you can get a feel for it. I actually uh, did these things uh, when I was a student I wrote a Fortran program then plotted nowadays things are very easy you can make this formula in Excel with one click and drag down and, and uh, it is within uh, seconds you can get all these things. Uh, but I will uh, draw some hand draw some how the uh, curve will looks like. So let us look at the admittance of 0, 0. So I will look at the pressure amplitude. This wave would look like this. The dominating feature is that you are minimum will touch 0. Okay. So you can make this plots in log scales or linear scale. The acoustician sometimes plot in log scale in decibels and so on, but I have plotted in a linear scale. So now why does it touch 0? That means the incident wave and admittance of real part of admittance is 0, that means or A equal to B. So you have a perfect reflection, you can have A equal to minus B also. Uh, you have a perfect reflection and therefore at the minimas the wave is able to cancel precisely. Uh, of course that is only in theory, in reality we never have perfect reflection. If you have a closed end as I mentioned, um, they will still vibrate and if you have open end some radiation will happen. So in a practical context I think you can, a typical maxima to minima ratio of 10 would be uh, what you expect for a, uh, a perfect uh, uh, perfect termination that is what I would expect. Now I have seen values as high as 25 and so on uh, for smaller ducts and for bigger ducts it can be instead of 10 the ratio can be 8 and so on. But that is number and if you have a maxima divided by minimum of 2 or 3 then definitely you are far from a perfect termination. So these are just thumb rules and it depends on the frequency, it depends on how you tighten the nuts and bolts and so on. And if you do very well, I think you can get, uh, I mean 10 is considered very good I think, uh, maxima to minima ratio. But uh, I have seen one of my students, Libiga, she can get, uh, make it nice such that you get a ratio of 25, uh, which is, uh, I mean that is the best I have ever seen in my life, uh, maxima to minima ratio for a standing wheel. Uh, now if I raise the real part, first let us look, look at that, that is easy, what will happen is let let let's let me take um, color and draw 0 0.1 comma 0 so so it would look like this um, the actual amplitude itself doesn't have any meaning because we are having a linear theory so you can multiply this by any number and you will still have a solution so the actual values does not mean much, but what happens is this uh, as you increase the real part of admittance the uh, ratio of maxima to minima will keep coming down that is what you would observe. So let us try another one, I, I, I urge you to plot these graphs and see, <coughs> but you will get something like this. Now what I wish to emphasize as, as what Shabrish has pointed out the other day, I will get exactly the same result even if I had <coughs> minus 1 over 0 or uh, minus 0 0.6 comma 0. I will get exactly the same result and I would not be able to distinguish it. F for doing that we will have to draw the face. Okay. Now if you look at the face. Let me zero. Put this over here. Now, if I were to plot the face, and I said that uh, for a perfect termination at the minima, you had a face shift of 180 degree or something like that, right? So. Uh, But really for a perfect 
termination no energy is going this way or that way it is just staying there. So, whether you draw it this way down or going up it, it does not make any difference, but if you uh, now speak about the the 0 0.1 comma 0 if you have a driving it would go this way and for the next one it would be uh, even more this way. In the end if you get a left running wave and that would be what would be that what will be the admittance of the left running wave no complete right let us look at right running wave you have right running wave rho c I mean 1 over rho c right I mean that is we are non dimensionalizing with that. So, you will get 1 right is not it. I mean these are the non dimensional values. So, I, I should get a straight line like that right because we, we saw. So, here your energy is coming from left to right. So, this reflected wave is dominating B is greater than A. So, you now can pick your B as A plus I mean uh, p max plus p min over 2. Now, if you had uh, uh, minus 0 0.6 for example, so I will draw it on top of this, the curve would look like this. So, this would be minus 0 0.6 comma 0 and this would be and the limit would be the traveling wave which would go like this. I think I should erase this other curve so that it is not confusing. So, this blue is minus 0 0.6 comma 0 this would be so you have to determine the phase and that is the only way you can be able to distinguish between a left running wave and a right running wave is this clear so i would uh, suggest that uh, you make a plot of these things and, and uh, uh, get a feel for it and I will in the examination I will give some admittance values and give you a few plots and I ask you which one would roughly correspond to that in a qualitative sense I ask this every year and every year most people get it wrong. I just want to distinguish between the imaginary parts I will give you two values. <coughs> So, let us say I have zero comma one point two. Uh, zero comma zero would perfectly line up. Zero comma one point two would look like this. This is x and. Uh, So, the imaginary part actually decides it is an indication of where the reflection is taking place. So, if you have 0 comma 0 you would uh, so this would be 0 comma 0. So, the reflection can be thought of as just taking place right at the surface but you can think of it the reflection to be happening a little bit ahead or little bit behind. So, the imaginary part 
actually indicates that. I will work out a problem to uh, give you more feel of this, but this is how you would obtain in the pattern. And like I said, we really need to see the pattern, be able to tell what kind of admittance you have. But to be able to do a good job was that, you have to be able to play with numbers and see what numbers give what pattern. So, as I mentioned to you, I did these experiments uh, when the conditions on the data acquisition systems were very bad. We did not have lab view, we did not have proper computers, we had data acquisition system on a paper tape and so on. So, it was really difficult. So, it was really important that you knew what you were looking for, otherwise you would spend lots of effort and not get anything. Uh, I think had I been doing the experiments in the modern times as in now, I would not probably uh, think about this thing so much. Uh, so, the last question is as Anviksha asked this morning, so what is the procedure to determine admittance? So, it is very simple, you determine uh, the pressure maxima and the pressure minima and the location of the minima and then we can determine A as P max plus P min over 2 and B as P max minus P min over 2 or vice versa. Now, we do not know which is which, so for that we have the phase plot and if the phase plots are uh, coming this way, if they are falling that means your reflected wave is stronger than the incident wave and if the phase plots are going that way that means the incident wave is stronger than the reflected wave. So, you pick your A and B appropriately, we also know your phi because there is a relation for the location of x location of the minima and the phi right, we are derived in last class in terms of k x and uh, so on. Uh, so, give, so, now we know A, B and C and knowing A, B, a, B and C we can get the general expression for pressure and velocity which we wrote A e power i k x plus B e power minus i k x that is the pressure and similarly uh, there is a relation for velocity. So, knowing that we can evaluate that expression at any location and you can get the admittance at any location. I hope this is uh, clear, I will just uh, summarize it, I will list it. So, now we know A, B and uh, E. So, and capital A and capital B can be determined from small a, small v and phi. So, if you want at x equal to 0, if you fix the reference frame as uh, reference frame as that, then that would be equal to So, this is the uh, simple procedure to determine admittance. Now, uh, you can uh, do this if you can precisely determine the location of maxima and minima, but if you are doing a experiment like if you are studying the admittance of solid propellant or something in a burning propellant in a impedance tube of the flame, then we may not have time to locate the maxima and locate the minima because you have to move a probe somewhere and find it and the experiment is over let us say in 0 0.2 seconds and there is no question of moving anything to find that and so on. So, therefore, what you do is you have to mount a lot of transducers and even if you had 15 transducers, you still cannot pick the minima exactly. So, we will have to use data from everything and do like a curve fitting kind of situation and you can uh, curve fit for the amplitude and the phase that would be the best thing and then uh, you can get the A, B and phi and uh, then you can actually do the same procedure. So, that would be how you would obtain the uh, admittance if you are unable to pinpoint the maxima and the minima and if you um, have only two microphones, uh, there is of course, the variant of 
two microphone technique, which you have uh, you derive expression in terms of some specific locations, you have the microphone P 1 and P 2 and then you can do that. So, I would not deal with these things, uh, but you can look it up on your own. So, I, I will stop here. Uh, the next thing to look at is that, so now we studied a problem where we are driving with the loudspeaker and you are having a standing wave which is not changing in amplitude, but now often we are interested in stability. So, now, now let us say we have a termination of certain admittance, it can be uh, positive or negative, it can send energy in, send energy out. How would you relate that to the growth rate or decay rate? So, that is the next question. So, what we would do is to, uh, we did this problem of closed open end, we will do another problem, let us say one end is closed and the other end is uh, having admittance boundary conditions and then we will derive the eigenvalue of that problem and compare, uh, uh, look at the real and imaginary part and see how the periodic part is affected, that is how the real frequency is affected and in, in terms of admittance and then we will look at what is the growth rate or decay rate in terms of the admittance. So, you can actually get expressions for change in frequency in terms of the imaginary part of admittance because I, as I mentioned uh, it, it decides where the reflection happens and or, or it, it indicates uh, and you can also get the growth rate uh, in terms of the admittance because the growth rate depends on how much energy is coming in or going out. So, this we will do in the next class, I stop here, is there any questions? how to get a continuous graph. Uh, so, uh, the question is how to get a continuous graph for phase. So, what you really get is a lot of discrete points actually. So, I mean same with amplitude, amplitude you cannot get, uh, you have, if you make, you, you are making discrete measurements and then you are plotting it and then we can curve it. So, you have uh, measurements at several locations and you can um, curve it or something. Yeah, that is true. So we, we uh, so we have a reference microphone, and with respect to that, we measure. And we, if it, if it is zero degree, it can be zero or three sixty or seven twenty, and and so on. We have that much ambiguity, but we can do this what is called phase unwrap and get it continuous, because it doesn't matter. So we can actually get it to a continuous curve. You can actually take off this point and add three sixty degree to that, but then solving is a, uh, I mean your tan inverse formula also has a, a problem. So, I would um, make it uh, smooth and work out. And uh, the other thing I want to say is I will never use tan inverse command in the computer, I will use a tan 2 which gives both the numerator and denominator, so that you can distinguish between the various quadrants. And in general I would not curve it for the phase because of this problem but you can always curve it for, you can write things as real part and imaginary part and then curve it those things, that will be easier to do rather than write it as complex number and curve fitting for that. So, that way you are side stepping this, but in general while plotting we can uh, unwrap it, that means you can keep on plotting it as a continuous thing, but then if you are having several wavelengths you will run out of the page and then therefore, you can actually add 2 pi or subtract 2 pi and make it fit within your page. So, that is all possible. Anything else? Now, these are practical issues, very good you asked this question. Anything else? Okay, so call it a day. Thank you.